What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to NBA Every Day. Can you believe that we're talking about the Minnesota Timberwolves? We're like, what? A couple days into this series and it definitely felt like the Timberwolves are going to be a team that we talked about very late in this series but they made a trade today and me being a youtuber it is my job to try to maximize on the views by talking about a team while they made some deals and I'll be looking at their team looking at some of the other stuff going on around the league and I'm actually intrigued about what's going on in Minnesota Patrick Beverly got traded from the Clippers went to the Memphis Grizzlies and made a tweet grit and grind let's go I made a tweet that was like hey Patrick Beverly from Chicago born and raised Tony Allen from Chicago born and raised Patrick Beverly gotta feel those shoes of Tony Allen and then he got traded to, to Minnesota um so he that tweet of grit and grind is no longer matters but he did make another tweet today saying he's excited to be with the minnesota timberwolves but <laughs> there are also rumors that the timberwolves are super intrigued by potentially adding ben simmons i don't know what a trade package looks like for ben simmons with the minnesota timberwolves but i do know that patrick beverly will have to be involved so you might see three destination tweets from patrick beverly this offseason unlikely that ben ends up there but i'm just saying it might it's a possibility especially after yesterday we dropped the video talking about ben simmons and then it came out that he still has returned and he calls joel and b just got a max extension and it said that ben simmons is solely expecting to be traded this offseason so I, i'm not saying minnesota is the place I'm just saying it's a possibility. Anyway, the reason why the Minnesota Timberwolves felt like a team we wouldn't talk about to the very end is because last year they were not very good. They had their bright spots, of course, in the first overall pick and, and Anthony Edwards. And D'Angelo Russell had an up-and-down season. Carl Anthony Towns, but, you know, it, I, it's a very weird season for Carl Anthony Towns. All the things he went through off the court. I'm not looking at anything he did this season and saying that, oh, this is the reason why he can't do this or yada yada like some people are. I just know outside circumstances can really, really hurt a player or a person just in general. But they are still a team that went 23 and 49. And then we got to this offseason. They didn't have their pick. That was the pick that turned out to go to the Warriors. Um, and they didn't do anything, man. They traded Ricky Rubio for Torian Prince. And then now they did a trade today. But for the most part, a team that had been towards the bottom of the conference since Jimmy Butler left continues to do things that won't raise their ceiling. These guys won 23 games, and for the majority of this offseason, they was like, we can run it back. Let's see what we got this year around. And yes, they're counting on a lot, a lot of progression from a guy like Anthony Edwards. Of course, he was the first overall pick and shooting half court shots five in a row this offseason. Um, we're expecting his type of progression. We're expecting Carl Anthony Towns to hopefully be better than what he has been the last couple seasons. We're for D'Angelo Russell to have a healthy season. But even all of that combined, there's still probably a ceiling on what this team could be going into this next season. And Patrick Beverly does help that. Defensively, as you can imagine, the Minnesota Timberwolves are really bad. They were 27th overall when it comes to points per 100 possessions given up. They are basically tied with the Houston Rockets, which is not a good thing because the Houston Rockets wasn't trying to do a damn thing last season. And y'all were actually trying to make pushes and things. They were slightly better than the Portland Trailblazers. That kind of tells you how great of an offensive team the Trailblazers were last season. That they had the second worst defense in the entire league and still ended up making a push. Uh, but you can basically say the Minnesota Timberwolves were not a good defensive team last year. Now, adding a guy like Patrick Beverly will help that I know that Torian Prince didn't play a lot last season and then when he did play I'm gonna be honest I wasn't watching but based on track record and what I've seen from him in the last couple years he's a positive defender and these are the type of changes they decided to make this season I don't believe Patrick Beverly is coming into the Minnesota Timberwolves organization is starting immediately but if you look at him from a from a mentor not that he gonna teach all the dirtiness and things like that but just just being gritty and being a good defensive player I think that some of that can rub off on Anthony Edwards some of that can rub off on D'Angelo Russell and those are the players that you really need to be better defenders because those are the players that are gonna be getting 35 to 40 minutes a game for you so in this trade the Minnesota Tim was getting Patrick Beverly and they sent out Jared Culver and Wancho Horn Gomez to the Memphis Grizzlies and Gerson Rosas is a guy that's in charge over there. Um, he took over basically the year that Jerichova was drafted. And I was just doing a little bit of research before this because I know Jerichova hasn't been good in his first two seasons. There was a small period of time in his rookie season where he was averaging like 15 points per. He was shooting the ball okay. And that gave people a little bit of buzz thinking that he wasn't the wrong pick there. But when I was doing a little bit of research, they traded up for that pick. If you forgot, let me tell you what they traded to get Jerichova to eventually give up on him two years later. They traded the pick that became Cameron Johnson, and they traded away Dario Sarge. And now they have Patrick Beverly. I mean, it's just, it's just not a good trade. Not a good trade. But what I read was they traded up for that pick in hopes that Darius Garland would still be there at number six. But Darius Garland got drafted fifth. 
so they just went with the guy they thought was best available and they were they were wrong um i, I do i don't want to give up on jared culver um because again he had that one month period of time in this rookie season where he's averaging pretty solid numbers but sophomore year i don't know what the heck happened he went from a guy that that i felt like a lot of people were like man jared culver's deserve a more opportunity but they were giving him opportunity and he wasn't doing anything with it and at this point of their careers with car anthony towns being there for x amount of years them trading everything they had with for d'angelo russell and having the first overall pick and anthony edwards this is a team that is trying to make the playoffs they're not in the realm of oh let's go give jared cover 10 more minutes so he can get better as an nba player they're trying to win they're not being successful in doing that, but they're trying to win, and they couldn't afford to roll the ball out for a guy that didn't do anything his sophomore year. And now they give up on him for the last year on the contract for Patrick Beverly. It's kind of rough. The Watcher Her and Goldman story is actually interesting, too. Um, I was not aware of this until a couple hours ago, but listen, this is why I I'm a guy that really loves the game of basketball. I thought I knew everything, and I just don't. So let me tell you this story. Watcher Her and Gomez, who was also a part of this trade, he's going to the, the uh, Memphis Grizzlies. He dislocated his shoulder a couple months ago, which is, I understand that, Wancho. I've, I've been there before. I am currently in physical therapy for my shoulders. I've been there before. I know what it's like. Um, and he had a sub subluxion dislocation, which is basically when your shoulder dislocates, but it puts itself back in. I've been there as well, right? And this is right in time for the Olympics. He wants to represent his country. I mean, there's no better feeling. You can ask anybody, whether it be on Team USA or Team whatever, there's no better feeling than representing your entire country, putting on a jersey and trying to win a medal for them. And Huncho uh, Warren Gomez was like, hey, Wancho Hearn Gomez. Saying that name too many times in a row, you really get tongue twisted. Um, he was like, I want to go play for my home country, as he would, but he was just dealing with this shoulder separation injury. And Gerson Rosas is like, ah, I don't know if we want you to do that. You can go work out and everything, but we won't give you the green light just yet. And right before they were supposed to go over and go to Tokyo and yada yada, Gerson Rosas told her and Gomez, no, we are shutting you down. We do not give you the green light to play in the Olympics. So he did it. And the Olympics wrapped up, what, a week ago, two weeks ago? And they traded him away tough tough i wonder if the memphis grizzlies would have gave him the green light to play overseas for his country which is kind of weird man it's def definitely a weird story but a deeper story than that this is why doing research before videos is actually kind of intriguing but i hate doing it um i did not know that Wanda Hearn gomez is about to be in the movie with adam sandler what um this is officially from the minnesota tim wolves <laughs> like um website Netflix unveils first look at Horan Gomez's new film with Sandler. This movie, I, I am a good, I'm a sucker for a good basketball movie, so I'm here for this. Once her Horan Gomez is following the footsteps of Kevin Garnett, and they traded him away just like they traded Kevin Garnett, even though Kevin Garnett basically forced his way. Yeah, I understand, KG. I 100% I agree with your decision, and you won a championship. Like the Timberwolves legend and Hall of Famer stole the show in Uncut Gems, Horan Gomez is set to co-star alongside comedy great Adam Sandler in a Netflix film, Hustle. While the Spaniards spent time working out in the Twin Cities this summer, Hern Gomez has more recently been on location in Europe and Philadelphia filming his big scene debut. Per Variety, Sandler plays an American basketball scout who, after being unjustly fired, discovers a talented player abroad and decides to bring him to the U.S. to prove that they both have what it takes to make the NBA in the movie. Like, like, bro! A scout movie about bat hustle is produced by LeBron James and also stars Queen Latifah and Robert Duvall. What? When is this coming out? Because we're doing a full review on this. Anyway, watch your Hern Gomez. Um, the Minnesota Timberwolves allowed him to work on this movie um, during the offseason. And it turns out after the movie, he came into training camp on, out of shape. And then he caught COVID. And then, as you remember, the year before this last year, um, watching her Gomez was really solid. They even gave him an extension. I think it was like three years, 21 million. He was really solid. And last year, coming into camp um, um, not in great shape and also catching COVID, he basically was completely out of the rotation. And now they flip him for Patrick Beverly. So one of the things that the Minnesota Timberwolves desperately needed in their locker room was, was veterans. 
and with Torian Prince and Patrick Beverly coming into the team, they might fill that void. Um, they did have Ricky Rubio as a veteran, and it seems like Anthony Edwards and Ricky Rubio really got along, but there's rumors that the Watcher Hearn Gomez story that I told you rubbed Ricky Rubio the wrong way, and that's one of the reasons why they got him off the team. But unfortunately, with, even with all of that said, the West is just such a deep conference that I can't look at their roster and think that they're going to be a playoff team. Is it a possibility? For sure. You have Carlton Towns, one of the better young players in the league. You have Anthony Edwards, who's coming off a good rookie season I, I think it's a possibility but if I was laying out my predictions for playoff seating I wouldn't have the Minnesota Timberwolves in there just yet I think a lot of it relies on D'Angelo Russell um because there's two different sides of D'Lo let's be honest man D'Angelo Russell has had years where he was an all-star where D'Angelo Russell was the the star player on a team that wasn't expected to make the playoffs that did make the playoffs but since then he struggled to stay on the floor and when he has been on the floor he hasn't been the player that they traded all the picks for I do love the idea of them swinging for the fences and potentially bringing in Ben I don't know what that looks like I don't even know what pieces that is Malik Beasley Patrick Beverly and all the picks it seems like if that trade wasn't going through they would need a third team to be a part of it I would want that to happen for the sake of their fans because they desperately need playoff appearances. They desperately need to show Carthony Towns we are here for you to, to, to be the future. I would hate for Minnesota Timberwolves fans to go through the same thing they went through with Kevin Garnett again with Carthony Towns. So let me know in the comment section what you think about the offseason of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Not a lot going on, but something happened today.